You're very welcome to Lorna Porca here on WLR, to Moss McCarthy here till 7 o'clock. Coming up on another packed show, Crunch Time. Kieran O'Gorman and Tony Ryan preview round three of the County Senior Hurling Championship. Mayo for Sam. Martin Kearney on Saturday's All Ireland Football Final between Mayo and Tyrone. And Minor Matters. We'll hear from new Dacia Minor Hurling boss Shane Ahern and Stephen Goff on why he is stepping down as under 20 manager. So more trills and spills are in store this weekend in round three of the County Senior Hurling Championship. Lismore, Ballygunner, Mount Sign and Dungarvan are all through to the quarterfinals, while Bally Sagart and De La Salle will be in the relegation playoffs. Plenty of issues still to be decided though, and to look ahead to all the action, they'd like to be joined in studio by former Waterford Minor and Under 21 coach Kieran O'Gorman and GA correspondent with the Dungarvan Observer, Tony Ryan. And Tony, first of all, looking back to last weekend, first off, how surprised are you to see De La Salle in the relegation playoffs? I sure myself and the whole county <coughs> would be totally surprised to see that it's had in that position. And even after we beat them, I think they were still second favourites to win the title. You know, be- behind Bally Gunner. You know, so no, nobody was expecting uh, this at all. But it must be said that on both occasions, the t- two teams that beat them deserve to beat them. So now what they still have to do is they have to get their act together and make sure they don't they don't fall in the, at the relegation because there's two teams going down this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's, it's high stakes. And here there was real high drama in in Fraher Field uh, last weekend, um, Sunday night, Morris Shanahan pulled it out of the bag for Lismore, beaten Four Mile Water by a point. Has has Morris been the, the star of this year's championship to date? Um, I suppose looking at the scoring records, he is, Tomas. I think he has he scored 422 or 423 in the two games or something like that. 523, is it? 525, I think. 525, jeez. like the time. But uh, <laughs> no, he was a, he's been the standout performer for Lismore, I suppose for the last 10 years now and uh, I said many a time to you I think on occasions that he's the best performing club hurling in Wofford in the last 10 years and he's not showing any signs, signs of stopping at the moment which is great for us No, oh, absolutely and, and and Tony the previous night um, you know Tallow snatched victory from the jaws of defeat that late late goal from cornerback Mark O'Brien mm. how did they pull it out of the fire? I think Tallow showed their experience of being in the senior grade you know, the, how did Mark O'Brien get himself in that position? You know, where, where was Bally Sagat? They're learning their experience the hard way by losing narrowly on, on, on both occasions. You know, but they will, they will learn their, 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 their trade. You know, they have another tough game again this week now. But uh, just uh, Tating Teller showed their experience at the end. And Mark O'Brien wasn't one bit surprised that he was the man that pulled on the ball and buried it in the net. Yeah, and Kieran, like that victory for Tello now sets up a, a real winner takes all clash now in Farfield Saturday against Four Mile Water, 2.30 throw-in. Um, what have you made of Four Mile so far under Michael Ryan? Four Mile have been the same. To, to me, Four Mile have been the same over the number, last number of years. They're, they're very hard to break down. And even like even looking at them there last week against Lismore, Lismore are very fortunate to get over the line against them. I like, um, don't think Four Mile scored for the last 10 or 12 minutes, but in that period of time, I think they had four or five wides. Like... like I don't. I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. I. I think they're they're not playing at times to their full potential, and I was often putting it down to playing football one week and hurling the next week. But they're playing hurling the whole time at the moment. Now I. Pre, I presume that they are, and that the football training wait till the hurling is over, and they probably come on again for last week. Do you know, there's nothing like championship games to bring it to bring teams on, but um, just. From a Lismore point of view, Lismore are very lucky that they didn't have their shooting boots on last week. Yeah, absolutely. Tony, turning to yourself, who do you fancy out of Former Water and Tallow to, to join Lismore in the last eight? Well, I think it's a real 50 50 game because both both teams beat Belly Sagart by one by the minimum, another by two points. You know, so I think it's, it's going to be a real, you know, a real tension packed game. And um, like I think we still have to see the best from Jamie Byrne for Four Mile Water. And if he gives one of his good performances the weekend, I think they could um, be Tallow OK. Uh, Tommy Raymond off injured, Tallow the last day. Depends, will, will he be playing? And I think it was Ken Cairn, they got a bad injury as well. And I think uh, we wish him well because I think he was in at the grounds until about half 10, 11 o'clock that night waiting for an ambulance. So he he could be out as well, you know. And then would Tallow have the, a panel, you know, to, count, to counteract that? Whereas I don't think for Malwater have a great panel either. Whereas it's going to be a real, you know... 50-50 game it's hard to say who'll, who'll win that one yeah it's going to go down to the wire like all the games in, in, in this group Tony and, and we echo your sentiments about 
Ken Carney as well. We wish him a speedy recovery. A lot of bad injuries around at the moment, unfortunately. Um, Kieran, turning to another crunch game up in Welsh Park, Passage versus Clonay. Clonay need an eight point win to qualify uh, for the knockout stages. Do you think they can achieve that? Well, before you throw it back at me, you know, I, I tipped Clane to come out of this group at the start, but I, I'm after having to rethink my thoughts. I think Passage really surprised me in the first game against Ron Moore with a comfortable enough victory against Ron Moore. I, I, I think I wasn't that the game, but people have been telling me that the scoreline flattered Ron Moore. Um, so, um, yeah, then Ron Moore came along and were comprehensive enough winners last week against Clane. So going on the form book, you'd be saying Passage to beat Clane. No, it's a like Clanny are going to come out with all guns blazing because if they lose this, they're in relegation. If they win, they can, they might be able to avoid a playoff. But I think they'd have to win comprehensively. I don't know what way. I'm not sure what way the scoring is. They might have to win by ten points or something. But I honestly, I can't really see that. I can't see that happening. Yeah, and like Kieran, like you mentioned, passages big win over Rowan Moore the first day out, and one of their standout performance was uh, Mark Fitzgerald mm. got two three on his senior debut. Do you think he could be someone that might break into Liam Cattle's plans next year? Uh, maybe next year might be a bit early. He's he's still only 18 years of age, I think, is he? Maybe 19. Um, I don't know. Look, there's plenty of young talent around, but la- I'm sh- look, Liam Cal knows better than any of the three of us here when, when's, the right fella to, when's the right time to put in a fellow when's not. But, um, yeah, he's definitely a, a, pros- a huge prospect for the future. I saw him in a league game for passage against Liz Moore and he played centre forward. I think he scored two six or two seven that night from play at centre forward up in his moor. And um, yeah, he's a real prospect for the future. But I'd be just wondering, will he is he going to fall between this place? What's his best position? Passer playing centre forward. He played full back for Waterford in twenties this year. Would, so, would you have any opinion, Kieran, one way or the other, of where he's best suited? Well, if a fella can score two three in a championship game, I think he should be playing the forwards. Very good. Very good. Um, Tony, we're going to throw you the much anticipated derby meeting of Lismore and Bally Sagart. We know at this stage that Lismore will finish top of the group and Bally Sagart will finish bottom. Will that take any of the heat out of out of this game, do you think? I don't think so, to most. I mean, this is the game that everyone has been looking forward to since the draws were made. I know they're at different ends of the table, but I don't think the, the game itself and the difference in the scoring will ref, will reflect that. You know, I thought in the third quarter last week when Lismore were playing against uh, Formal Water that they were very average, very poor altogether and Formal Water had a chance to, to finish off the game and to, and to beat them, you know. Whereas um, I'm very impressed with uh, Belly Sagard in the two games that they've played, you know, and I, could, I think this will be a, a very close game and if I was asked to pick one over the other, even though they're at the bottom of the table, I would edge Belly Sagard to, to win this one. Well, what 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 makes you what makes you say that Bally Sagar could get one over their neighbours, Tony? Well, I think they're playing with greater intensity than than Lismore in in both games so far, and like Lismore are, are depending on Morris the whole time. But I say in that third quarter, nothing happened. I think Morris got two pointed frees, and like that. And you, you look at the, at the opposite with the, the three Bennett's like, where Stephen has been the main man so far, you know, and with the scoring and that they'll go right to the very end. As I said, they're, they got cost from maybe lack of inspir- experience in the senior grade, you know. And what what better game than to f- finish off and win with, against their, their neighbours? Yeah. More. Have they been the unluckiest team in the championship so far, Tony, having lost both their games in injury time? Well, I suppose, in, in one sense they have, you know, but you, you, you make your own luck as well too. They had an awful lot of wides the first day, so they had no one to blame the, the first day, only themselves, you know, and, and um, so they didn't finish off the other game. You know, but uh, I hope they stay in the senior grade. You know, because like they, they deserve to be, and the performance they deserve to be in the senior grade. But you have to get the results to do that. You certainly do. Well, they certainly brought a huge amount of entertainment so far. Turning to Sunday, Kieran Belly the Upper versus Abbey Side, one thirty in in Fairfield. Um, high stakes here. Winner will be in a quarter final. Loser will be in relegation playoff. How do you expect this one to go? Uh, I f- I fancy Abbey Side to win this one. Um, they ran, I think there was a six points between themselves and Belly Gunner last week. Probably the closest anyone who's got to Belly Gunner in about five years. Um, as I said, the last day I was into, I think Abbey Side are the, t- are the next team that could possibly topple Belly Gunner. But um, yeah, um, I, can, I can't see anything else, really, only a, an Abbey Side victory in this one. And Belly Duff, are, Belly Duff for all their spirit and gung ho and everything. But I, mean, I think they're going to be in a relegation battle. I, can't, I I honestly can't see him turning over Abbeyside in this one. Yeah, I think Abbeyside showed enough 
last weekend, Kieran, to prove that they're genuine title contenders? They are, they are genuine title contenders. Like, it was their first game as well, so they're going to come on a lot for that first game. Um, like, they're going to finish second in their group, I think. So, uh, no team would want to be facing them in the quarter final. Um, yeah, like, they have Connor Prunty, Neil Montgomery, Michael Coyley from the county from the county team and then you like put in Mark Farron come with that Darren McGrath you know like they've more other players Stephen Enright can go like they've plenty of experience and and around the field and um, I'm sure that they'll be looking forward to maybe getting another crack at Belly Gunner later in the year I'm sure, I'm sure they will and like the last day Tony Connor Prunty really put the shackles on, on Desi Hutchinson in, in, a, in a full back do you think we might see him maybe a little bit further out the field on this occasion um, I maybe I think he was down the centre back. You know that they they, they play him at centre back at, at, at club level. You know, but like the job he did on Dizzy Hutchinson proves once again what kind of a man, a man marker he is, and one of the best man markers in the game. And and like we should congratulate him there on, on making this you know the Sunday game team of the team of the year. And hopefully that'll be the the start to getting an all star this year because on, on his displays he definitely deserves an all star. Yeah, you Fan, fantastic marker, a great player. In a number of the games this year, as things went against them, maybe he conceded a goal or two, but he came back into the game. Sign of a great player. Will Bally Duff be looking for a big improvement on their opening showing against Bally Gunner, Tony? They, they will OK, but I think they're, you know, they're, they're limited enough. You know, and every side man told me now that he makes out that they never beat Bally Duff in Championship. I think they beat him on one occasion. But in a, in a lot of tight games over the years, that um, Belly Duff beat beat Abbey side. But I think this is a, this is a different you know period in history now. Like for uh, Abbey side, you see, if they win again now on Sunday, they'll avoid Belly Gunner because they can play Belly Gunner, you know. And if the two teams meet again, it'll be interesting. I think what what's also interesting about Belly Gunner is like, are the two Mahoney shown mileage on the clock, or are they minding them? It was it Philip Mahoney came off fairly early the last mm. day and Tori Mahoney came on late, you know? And are they blooding the, the other fellas and then going to bring in the, the other two boys later on in the championship? Or, you know, say a belly gunner team in the heat of battle without Tori Mahoney, I think a team like Abbeyside could push them to the limit. Yeah, do you think belly gunner will need both? Mahoney is on the field, Tony, to make it eight in a row, retain I think the title. So, yeah, I think they will, yeah. And especially Porrick. If you've watched the games over the years with Porrick, everything goes through him. Absolutely, it certainly uh-huh. does. Kieran, looking at the final game of the weekend, it's uh, Dungarvan versus Mount Sion, uh, Welsh Park three thirty. Both sides are already through um, after beating uh, De La Salle. Looking at Dungarvan, first of all, what impressed you about them in their win uh, over De La Salle? What stood out to me um, was the work ethic that Dungarvan had against De La Salle that night, and I suppose really how to epitomise that the most was Michael Coyley's block down and came over with no hurley like and. That gave a lift to the whole team. Give a lift to the people that were there, but it gave a lift to the whole team. And like, I suppose it's Peter. Maybe that's Peter Smith's influence. I remember Peter playing for Middleton, and he was a good leader on himself as well. So he's getting that into the Dungarvan players, and um, that's what re- that's really impressed me about Dungarvan that night was their work ethic. Look, look, looking at at Mount Sion, uh, Kieran. Obviously, look, the standout player is Austin Gleeson, and he got he got three points, a couple of spectacular sidelines the last day, but. Did they show that the last day against Ellis that it's not just about Austin Gleeson that other players were able to uh, chip in as well? Yeah, like Midget Roach was outstanding again. Luke O'Brien was excellent for for him, you know. Like they've the top one of the top goalies in the county is still Iggy is still flying and like he's experienced inside the, with with his organisation of the back line and plus his distribution of puck outs is excellent. So um and they have a fine make Alan um Young Kerwin there was very good as well. So they have a good blend of experience with the likes of Austin and Iggy. And that, and then they have a bit of youth coming as well. Jamie Gleeson came on and got a point or two. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, it'll be down to the wire. Um, if to call it, um, I would think maybe Mount Sign would have an advantage with the game maybe being in Welsh Park. If it was in Dungarvan, I might it might swing me towards Dungarvan. But look, it's a toss of a coin. But because of the Welsh Park venue, I would go with Mount Sign. Great stuff. And Tony, just a, a final uh, question um, for yourself. There's, there's good news this weekend that 
the crowds are going to be up substantially. There's going to be 5,500 permitted in Welsh Park and 1,500 uh, allowed in Farfield and those tickets will be up on Waterford GA.ie. That's going to be a, a huge boost and no excuses now for supporters to get out and, and, and cheer on their, their club teams. Yeah, It is also to most for people that aren't involved in clubs up to now because the people that were involved in the two clubs were going to the matches. You know, I met a few people who said, I'd love to go to that match. It's okay, it's okay in the telly and all that, but I'd love to be there and to see it. So from this week on now, th- those regulars in the Flower Field and the regulars that go to Welsh Park, they can, they can go and see the matches and they can see the rest of the Hurling Championship, which is, is I think is going to be a fantastic few weeks of Hurling. Absolutely, uh, brilliant news on, on that front. So former Waterford Mine Run 21 coach Kieran O'Gorman and GA correspondent with the Dungarvan Observer, Tony Ryan. Thanks so much uh, for dropping in today. Was. Thanks, Boss. Now you're hurling. Lorna Porca with Tomás McCarthy on WLR.